What's good YouTube? In this video, I'll be showing you how to create this face tracking effect inside After Effects. We're going to be tracking the face of our subject as well as adding different effects to this footage in order to create a different look. So let's get right into it. Here in After Effects, I have this clip from Lil Tecca's music video. What I'm going to do in order to get started is I'm going to click the layer and go to where the tracker is. And if you can't see that, you can go to the Windows tab and make sure that the tracker is selected. And in order to create this effect, what I'm going to do is track the face of our subject make sure you select your layer and click stabilize motion and what that's going to do is just go into the layer from the composition after clicking the stabilize motion your track point one is going to appear and what i'm going to do is just move that closer towards the center of our subject's face i'm also going to make the track point one bigger in order to more accurately track the face of our subject I'm going to have it like that and the bigger the track point one box is the more render intensive it can be on your device so just be aware of that but having the track point bigger will definitely make the tracking more accurate you want to then click the options button and make sure your settings look like this it shouldn't be different and you want to make sure it's selected at stop tracking so that it can stop tracking after the face of our subject is finished tracking click ok you also only want to have the position option checked out instead of the rotation or the scale click the analyze forward button and sometimes when it's tracking your footage, the analyze can stop. And if it does stop, you can just click the analyze forward button again. So in my case, the track point kind of did get off of our subject's face. So what I'm going to do is just readjust it and have it back into the center of our subject's face. Then click the analyze forward button again. After hitting the analyze forward button, you should have a bunch of keyframes on your layer. So click the layer and click U to reveal the keyframes. And what that did was pretty much just keyframe every single frame that was tracking the face of our subject. After it's done analyzing, you want to then click the apply button and make sure your apply dimensions is selected at X and Y. Because in my case, I want the tracking to happen in both the X and Y axis. Click OK. And then now we're back into the composition. Now if we play this, we have that tracking effect going on with our footage. Make sure to have the motion blur on i'm going to then keyframe the scale as well as the position because the footage is tracking we do have transparent backgrounds so what i'm going to do is increase the scale to around 125 as you guys can see even if we play it we still have that transparent edges but once we add in all the effects as well as the keyframes i'm going to add a motion tile effect to this footage in order to get rid of the black borders in the beginning and what i'm going to do is make sure our subject is right at the center of our composition when creating this animation you can turn on the proportion grid to make sure that our subject's face is right at the center. I'm also going to keyframe the scale at the beginning and then go forward 10 frames. Hold the shift button and click page down on your keyboard to go forward 10 frames. Keyframe the scale again where it zooms into our subject's face. I'm going to have it pretty zoomed in at around 225 and that puts the face of our subject off center so we just have to readjust the position and make sure it's right at the center again. Grab those keyframes and easy ease them. Go into the graph editor of the scale keyframes. I'm going to have my graph like this where the influence is at 100% so that it animates really fast in the beginning and it animates out slow. And because the tracking effect constantly has our footage moving around in different positions, just keyframe the position and always have it keyframed to where the face of our subject is right at the center. Go through your timeline and just make sure that whatever you're tracking is always at the center. I'm going to have mine like that. So now if I play this, it has that zoom in effect in the beginning and the face of our subject is always at the center. I'm also just going to slightly decrease the scale of this to 220. I'm going to add a motion tile effect to this layer. Increase the output width as well as the output height to 300. Click mirror edges. Because I can see that motion tile effect, what I'm going to do is keyframe the position to where we can't see that anymore. So have it like that. And now if we play this, this is what we have without the black borders. Add a radial blur effect to this layer. Decrease the amount to five. I'm also going to be keyframing the center of our radial blur so that it's focused on the face of our subject. As the footage is playing, you want to constantly keyframe the center of the radial blur. Every time it moves, just make sure that it's at the center of the face. After keyframing the center of the radial blur, make sure to grab the radial blur keyframes, easy ease them. And in order to create that look where it has all these different effects on our footage, add an adjustment layer. Make that adjustment layer four frames long. I'm going to then add a shake flash effect to this adjustment layer. Go to the effects tab and type in wiggle. Drag the wiggle position onto this adjustment layer. Increase the wiggle speed to 50 and increase the wiggle amount to 100. Have the motion blur on. And what this does is just add that shake to our footage. 
drag this adjustment layer four frames forward. So right when that zoom in effect happens, it creates that shake, and then it's going to be cutting into that same clip, but with all the different effects on it. We're going to also add an exposure to this adjustment layer. Keyframe the exposure at four in the middle of the adjustment layer. Go towards the beginning, keyframe the exposure at zero, keyframe the end at zero. Grab those keyframes, easy ease them. And now we have that shake flash effect right when it zooms in. We're going to then add another adjustment layer. Make sure to cut that adjustment layer to the middle of our other adjustment layer. So that's where the cut is going to be happening from the clip without the effect on it into the clip with the effect on it. For this adjustment layer, we're going to add a glow. Increase the glow radius to 50 and decrease the glow intensity to 0.2 and then add a tritone to this adjustment layer. You can change the highlights, midtones, and the shadows to whatever color you want. In my case, I'm only going to change the midtones. I'm going to make mine look blue. So this is what it looks like with the tritone effect. I'm actually going to change the midtones and make it look a little brighter. After adding the tritone effect, I'm going to add a noise. Increase the amount of noise to 10. Turn off the use color noise. It adds that extra texture to our footage. I'm also going to add a brightness and contrast to this adjustment layer just to make the values of our footage pop out more. Increase the brightness to 15 and increase the contrast to around 25. Yeah, that looks good. And this is the final look of our effect. Adding all those effects onto these adjustment layers definitely makes it look like it transitions from one clip to another but it's still the same clip and the face tracking also makes it look really dope but that's all i have for this video make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel and i'll see you guys in the next video